Hi everyone, sorry for the last one reviewing. Um, today we're going to talk about Survive. Survive is from Stronghold Games. It's a classic game from the 1980s where your goal is to get your people off an island that is slowly self-destructing. Let's take a look at this iOS version of the game and see if it lives up to the super fun pedigree of the physical board game. The game supports up to four players. These can be bots or they can be human players. You can uh, hit uh, the star button to get all bot players, or you can add a player and give them a specific name, whether they be human or AI. Survive is a game about getting your people off of the island and onto safety on the smaller islands in the corners of the map. This is done by moving your players onto boats and moving those boats across the water to safety. However, stopping you is the time limit of the game, as the, game, the island shrinks as time goes on, and you also have to avoid uh, other players as they try to smash your boats with whales, eat your swimmers with sharks, or just destroy everything with sea monsters. In a basic turn, you will be moving up to three of your people, and you will also then be removing one of the tiles on the board, which allows you to send someone into the water. Each tile has something on the back. Some of them you will keep, or some of them will take effect immediately. Then you will roll a die, which will tell you what kind of sea creature you can move. So in this case, I rolled a sea monster. I can select one of the sea monsters and decide where to move them. So these are the basic actions you take. Turns are pretty quick, and the game is, has pretty simple rules. Most of the fun comes from the interaction with other players as you eat and destroy each other. The game continues until the final tile is drawn, which represents a volcano. At this point, the uh, players then will count up the points of those people that they've saved while everyone else perishes in a fiery blast. So here you can see the end of the game and the winners of this game, which was not me. I keep not getting lucky. Uh, the game is, plays pretty quickly, uh, especially in the board version. Uh, this iOS version is a little slower, I feel like, even, because you're actually waiting for a lot of AI turns. At least from a single-player perspective, it feels that way. The game does not feature tons of additional content, but it does include tips that you can turn on which act as a tutorial, as well as a rulebook that you can access. This game is created by Quado. They specialize in allowing players to connect multiple devices to a game. This is a cool feature to see implemented in iOS board games, and I hope it happens more often. This game doesn't have a ton of hidden information except at the first of the game, so it's not maybe not the best fit here, but it is cool to see the tech in action. Do you remember 2011? Back then, I was excited to see any board game on the iOS platform or any other platform. It was cool to see these digital board games, and I really wish this game had come out then, because I think I would be a lot more pleased with it, because back then, I was a lot more forgiving. Survive the board game is a lot of fun, and an iOS app of it should be a way to get more people to play the game, as well as provide a very fun way for fans to play on the go. At a basic level, this is what the game is. You can play it on the go, you can play with friends, and you can share it with others. However, there's a lot to be desired. I'm a big fan of turning board games into video games and applying as much animation, etc. as possible. In this game, the animation and the concept screens look really great, but the way it's turned out, it looks very jilted and looks like it's a rough draft. I really would love to see this polished, as I think it really gives the game right now a very cheap sort of feeling, but could be improved with some polish, as the preview screens looked like. Playing single player, the game can also move very slowly. The AI's turns play out in real time, the same as your turns, and they're even given time to think about and look at their hidden pieces, which seems a little strange to me since they're just computers but it does give you the feeling of playing with other people if that's what you're after. The actions you can do in Survive are fairly simple. You can play a tile, you can move your guys, you can move a boat, etc. However, to me, it feels like they've actually complicated these actions by the way that you control them. It's a series of taps and holds, etc. that you almost seem to confuse and do the wrong thing. I would love to see this simplified in a future iteration of the game, for sure. The developers have come out and said that this is the soft launch of the game, meaning that it will be improved upon in the future. They are taking data from this open beta and improving it. However, the problem with this open beta is that players have already paid a premium price for this game, and it certainly right now is not even close to a premium level. It reminds me of the early days of iOS board games where many mistakes were made. It is not up to the level of polish that we need these days. There needs to be a lot of improvements in terms of UI, in terms of responsiveness, and in many other areas of the game. The developers have been super ambitious in terms of graphic design as well as adding features like allowing players to play on multiple devices. These are amazing things that we don't see very often. However, they feel half-met here. 
In order to really meet those ambitions, we as the players will need to see improvements to both the graphics and to the rest of the technical package of the game to see that it lives up to the great promises that they have made. Mm -hmm.